All right, so I'm just gonna jump right into this video and pretend like nothing ever happened, okay? But the next video I put out, I will, it will be just me solely explaining what my year has been like. Just so you guys know, because I feel like I need to justify just abandoning doing these videos and abandoning all you guys on social media because I haven't even really been on Instagram other to post about my mom passing um, in, since like September. And Facebook, I haven't been on for months either. I just, I completely disappeared. So I feel like you guys deserve a reason and maybe you won't think it's justified, but it's, I just, I needed to step away. And so I'll explain all that because a lot has changed just for me personally and then also just for my beliefs they've changed so the question was this it was on Instagram I was wondering if you could do a video touching base on what the Bible says and what your thoughts on putting marriage in front of your kids is is it bad that I feel like my kids should come first before my partner what does God want me and my boyfriend were wondering and hoping you could give some of your thoughts on the subject we would appreciate it smiley face so first things first you heathens because you're not married and you have kids. I hope you know it's a joke. My daughter was outside of wedlock and now I'm divorced, which are both like no-nos. So I'm just kidding. My thoughts on the subject. I don't know if y'all really want my thoughts anymore. So basically, should your marriage come first or should your kids come first? Now, the general consensus is this. You have God first, your marriage second, your kids third, and your ministry, if you're involved in ministry, um, fourth. Whether that be, you know, you work in ministry, like vocational ministry, or you serve in church, or you're just doing anything that's ministerial in nature. So here are my thoughts on it. The first thing to say is that the scriptures don't necessarily cover that topic specifically. So just like a lot of things that you guys have me cover, you asked me to cover them because of that reason, like because the scriptures don't specifically give you an answer. So it's one of those deals where you have to take everything collectively and kind of decide what makes the most sense. So with all that in mind, what my thoughts on this are is that if you are in a marriage or, you know, it's just your boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever, you can't be good parents if you are in a shitty relationship. Meaning if you are not displaying love and respect and comfort and, you know, compassion and all these things in your relationship, then you're not parenting well. Now, I know a lot of you would say, well, I still parent well, even though my relationship is rocky. And that may be true. I understand that. But the thing is, if your kids are ever around, which I would assume they would be, when you and your partner are not doing well, whether you're arguing or just giving each other weird looks or there's just silence or whatever. Whatever is happening, you're creating an environment and the kids are just going to soak that crap up. Because kids are just like little sponges and when you think they're not paying attention, they're paying attention. They're watching everything you do, they're listening to everything you say and it doesn't matter how young they are. They've done a bunch of studies that show like babies, starting in baby life, you are soaking everything up cognitively so they are listening and as they get older they are starting to understand your kids are soaking that up and they're going to start to develop values based off that their morality is going to develop based off that their behavior is going to develop based on that if you've got a little girl and you have an abusive you know husband or boyfriend whether that's physically or just verbally or whatever she's going to start to subconsciously develop this idea or this belief that that's what a relationship looks like. So again, it's something that I've read a couple studies on is that these are usually the women that end up with abusive boyfriends or husbands because subconsciously, they don't think about it, but subconsciously they see that and it just gets ingrained in their brain that that's a relationship. That's the way it's supposed to be. So they're drawn to those type of men. And that goes both ways. So boys who see, you know, their mother acting crazy or mean or loud or whatever, there's also going to subconsciously just develop that belief that that's what normal is. Because what's normal is completely relative. So if you're creating that environment for kids, 
they're going to subconsciously start to develop this idea that that is what normal is. Jam all together, and I know a lot of people are like, okay, well, we don't yell, we don't scream, nobody hits anybody. It doesn't matter, even the little things like the stares you give each other or just like your behavior around each other, they're still going to soak that up and they're still going to develop those beliefs. So yeah, it's more subtle than like, dude smacking you in the face, but it's still just as damaging. And they're still going to develop as people thinking that that is normal and that that is healthy. The same thing applies to each, you know, ladder of the structure that I gave in the beginning of the video. God, marriage, kids, ministry. So if you're not right with God spiritually, then you're not going to have a good marriage or at least not a godly marriage. And then if your marriage isn't right or, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend relationship isn't right, then you're not parenting properly, so that affects your kids. And then if you're not doing any of those things, God, marriage, and kids properly, then your ministry is going to suffer. Because if you can't take care of your relationship with God, and you can't take care of your relationship with your wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, and you can't take care of your relationship with your kids, then how in the hell are you going to run a ministry? Or how are you going to serve properly in a ministry? How are you going to do any of that? So it's just this ladder that you are tumbling down head first and you're going to fail. If you fail at the first, you're going to fail at the second, third, and fourth. You just, you're not going to be able to pull it off if you don't have those things prioritized the way that they should be. Simply said, yeah, I do think your marriage or relationship does need to be the priority, but it's because your kids become the priority by doing that. I know that doesn't make sense, but it makes sense if you think about it. Just think about it for a minute. By facilitating a healthy relationship first, you are prioritizing your kids. If you put your kids first always, then you're not going to have a healthy relationship with your spouse or partner, and then you're going to be damaging your kids. That's kind of a cluster f isn't it? Yeah, he agreed. So you have to prioritize your relationship or your kids are going to end up crappy. It's well said. It's very well said. I love you guys. I'm sorry. I, I do think I'm finally back. I do think I'm able to start doing this again. I would love if you guys would hit me up on social media, give me a reason to, you know, be on there more and kind of jump back in head first. That'd be great. Happy New Year. It's New Year, by the way. God, I was watching the ball drop and half these newscasters were like, Happy New Year's. Like, bro, it's one year. It's a new year. It's not new years. It's new year. It's a new year. Singular. 2019 is one year. It's happy new year. New years. God, people, we're in America, we are just stupid. You know what I mean? Blue, you getting jelly? Up. I got two of them. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, go, whatever.